sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you Welcome need to do? everybody and hello, this is Andrew, David. What Blake, you need to do is be that person that's different and it's bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes. So gather around, boys and girls. Cuddle up close to the fire. It's time for a little bit of uh, of story time. It is fairly interesting that now every time I begin to tell a story, I imagine Sarah and Craig sitting next to me and him guiding me along with my tone of voice and the pace of my speech and everything else. Uh, I want you guys to think about stories of endurance and moments that you may have had in your life where you've had to endure, where you've had to outlast the trials, where you've had to struggle through the tribulations that have come. And we've heard of some of those stories that are, are common to many. You, you know, you have the uh, Moses and, and the children of Israel crossing the wilderness and taking 40 years. We have the pilgrims crossing. We have, you know, Columbus. We have all sorts of others, um, some forced upon the individuals that were um, having to endure and others taking upon them a journey themselves. And yeah, I know some of the stories if I were to talk about would be, you know, the pioneers here in America or Lewis and Clark. And of course, I'm going to tell stories about the U S because this is where I grew up and, you know, world history that you learn about is given to you by the people where you study. Right. I'm sure every single one of you is, you know, learned about history a little bit different. Um, but endurance, and the strength of the human spirit. Now, a more modern day example may be James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy. I've shared his story a few times. Um, you may look at him and see what he did and, and how amazing that was. But when it comes to endurance, I want you guys to, after today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something. I want you to look up this story. Maybe just find a little video on it on YouTube. National Geographic just found a ship called the Endurance. Mm -hmm down by Antarctica, right? How many of you have heard about that? Does anyone, okay, good. Does anyone know the story of the endurance? All right, I wanna tell you a little bit, Bruce, that doesn't surprise me. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about the story of the endurance here. So the endurance, this is Ernest Shackleton, ladies and gentlemen, he's a British citizen. Now, in the early 1900s, Right after, he says, after the conquest of the South Pole by Amundsen, who by a narrow margin of days only was in advance of the British expedition under Scott, there remained but one great main object of Antarctic journey, the crossing of the South Polar continent from sea to sea. So crossing the Antarctic, because what they had done before is gone to the South Pole and returned. And at that time, only 10 individuals have, had ever made it to the South Pole. 10 people in the early 1900s, only 10 had ever made it to the South Pole. Only five of them ever returned. And here was Ernest Shackleton deciding that he was going to create an expedition and go cross the Antarctic continent from sea to sea. Now, because he was going down, he, he knew they, they did... In their preparations, they understood that they weren't going to be, be able to bring enough supplies to go from one side to the other with them on that ship. And so what they had to do is create actually two different groups. And Shackleton and his crew on the Endurance would cross. The name of his ship was the Endurance. I should have mentioned that. So they would land and cross over. And, and another group would leave from Chile and, and land at the other side of the Antarctic and get about a third of the way in leave some supplies for them and head back out. And so Shackleton and his crew on the Endurance embark um, around 1914 in April, I believe, and they take off. And they had been told that it was an unseasonably cold winter and that the ice was a bit more brutal than normal, but they decided to undertake the journey anyway. And so as they went, they reached a point in the Weddell Sea and they encountered impenetrable barriers of old ice and that frustrated their, fur, uh, their further progress. So this is an actual picture from the endurance and the ice that was laid out in front of them. 
they got to the point where the ice was so thick they could no longer go forward and the ship became stuck. The endurance after over 281 days frozen, had drifted at least 1,186 miles off course. So now she was about 346 miles from Paulet Island. That was the nearest place that they could get to. These men were stuck on an ice cap for nearly a year at that point, but it didn't end there. The endurance was crushed to death by ice packs of the Whittle Sea on the 1st of November, 1915. Do you remember when I said that they left, that they embarked in April of 1914? At this point, they had been at sea on ice for more than a year, for nearly, or for more than a year and a half. Now, what happened is eventually they were able to, over the course of more than a month they recognized that they were not going to be able to get the ship out they tried to make it as light as possible so they removed as much as they could from it hoping that as the ice pushed together that it would lift the ship well that didn't happen and eventually it was crushed but they removed pretty much everything and they got to the point where they had three different lifeboats all 28 of the men that were together with Shackleton at that point were still alive they had begun to eat anything they could they were eating seals and penguins at one point they they did decide to over time they even had to um eat some of the sled dogs that were with them because the dogs were consuming more meat and food than the men were and so they became part of the diet over time well eventually they dragged the lifeboats to a point that they could get them into the water they took off And they landed here. This is Point Wild on Elephant Island. It's the site where camp was made um, once they eventually landed. Now, they landed at Elephant Island. It was inhabited at that point. It was in an area where they figured they could get closer to um, Edward Island, I believe is what it was. Edward or South Georgia, sorry. South Georgia Island was where there was an outpost for whaling they figured that was the the closest that was going to be available to them it was 900 miles away over some of the most deadly and and horrible seas that you could imagine they took one lifeboat shackleton the captain and a handful of others five other men took a lifeboat and left the remaining 20 something men at um elephant island with two boats that they turned into essentially their house for the next few months. And it took them weeks to travel those 900 miles in hurricane force gales. The captain that was leading it, Shackleton was leading the expedition, but the captain that was leading this was only able to see the sun four times during this journey. The rest of it was kind of guessing which direction they had to go. The island that they had to land on, Elephant Island, was 100 miles by 20 miles long imagine in the middle of the ocean there if they missed this that was it it wasn't just their lives at stake it was everybody else but they landed with weeks at sea their skin nearly raw from frostbite and and the cold wind they had to consistently knock ice off of the boat in order to keep it up but they land And it didn't end there. And then they had to cross a glacier. They had to cross mountains that were 5,000 feet high. They had to um, drill screws into the bottom of their shoes in order to hike. Edward took two other men. They had to leave three behind at camp because they were too sick to proceed. But they crossed the mountains. They came upon the village, scared the children to death when these men came out of the snow, full of beards and filthy and looking like who knows the abominable snowman coming out of a storm they came they saw these children and they asked for the uh the leader of the settlement by name they ran off screaming uh they walked up found the man man didn't recognize them even though they had met they'd stayed there two years before but they made it now his crew's still back on elephant island shackleton's there World War I has begun. The British government doesn't have the means, the wherewithal to be able to send 
any kind of help. Shackleton attempts one time to go out on a whaling boat, can't make it, the ice is too thick, he's forced to turn back. Eventually, the Chilean government gives him use of a, uh, a steamboat, and they go down, they get to Elephant Island, and the men on Elephant Island see the steamboat in the distance. Imagine, after nearly three years living on the Arctic shelf, floating on ice, and you see this steamboat coming up and a boat starts to come up and they recognize the man at the head of the boat as Shackleton. And he calls ahead, all well? And the captain of the, um, the man that they had left behind says, all are safe, all is well. And they make it back. All of the men that left on that expedition returned. All of them. The endurance was just found by National Geographic within the last few days. If there is a, an example of endurance greater than that, I don't know what it would be. Um, it was just, it's an incredible story. Take a few minutes, go watch it, read a little bit about it, and then stop for a moment and think about what you're trying to get through. You know, whether it's all of the time that you're putting into fixing a boat or changing up your finances or deal with a, a boss at work that you're struggling with, or maybe an illness that you keep having to wake up every single day, wondering where you're going to get the strength to continue on. Remember that others have come before you and been able to. Sometimes people it. have what it takes, but they yeah, haven't recognized it. Yet. Just go and so, so what do you need to do? Ken? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person. It's different and it's bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you